Hey there, everybody. I'm Nicholas Ravellis, the Geisel Director of Education and Outreach for San Diego Opera. You can call me Dr. Nick. You're getting ready to come to see one of the shortest, but certainly one of the most powerful operas ever written, Pagliacci, by the Italian composer Ruggero Leoncavallo. I'm going to tell you right up front that this is a story about passion, mistrust, infidelity, jealousy, and ultimately, violence. It's a tragedy. And like all tragedies, there's a sense of doom and gloom around it that can be a little disturbing. So fair warning, seeing this opera will probably be kind of an intense experience. But all operas are different. Some are comedies. Some are tragedies. Some are sentimental dramas. Some are fantasies. And like all forms of entertainment, each individual opera has a special character. And Pagliacci's character is definitely dark. The opera is best described through a unique Italian word, something new for your vocabulary besides Italian words for food, like pasta, pizza, vino, lasagna, and spaghetti. The word verismo. Verismo means realism. And works of art, stories, novels, plays, operas, that carry that description are created to show the audience a slice of real life, but not of the lives of people like you and me. No, no, no. These are the lives of people living in country villages, rural areas where agriculture is the economic driving force, where people live simply and sometimes in poverty, living off of what they grow. Verismo was the goal of artists who wanted to show something of this kind of hard, uncompromising life to those of us who are much more fortunate. It was a way to show sympathy for people whose lives were difficult, and perhaps a way to get us in the audience to be a bit more aware of people who grow our food, bake our bread, cultivate our land. Verismo was a very popular style in the late 19th century, especially in France and Italy, and the style lasted for 20 or 30 years in terms of its popularity. The Verismo opera Pagliacci was written in 1892, and it was one of the first operas in this style. The title translates as Clowns, but there's a character in the Italian theatrical tradition whose actual name is Pagliaccio. He always appeared on stage in a kind of white costume with big black pom-poms instead of buttons on his shirt, sleeves that were too long for his arms, a large baker's hat, and white makeup on his face. He was part of what we call the Commedia dell'arte tradition. The Commedia dell'arte was a tradition of touring troops of clowns, actors, musicians, acrobats that went from town to town acting out satirical plays. These were not plays in the sense we mean today, with a script neatly typed out and given to the actors to memorize. For the most part, these plays were improvised on the spot. The players portrayed various characters that became extremely well-known to Italian audiences. Characters like Colombina, the maid, Arlecchino, the jokester, Dottore, the professor, and Pantalone, the rich old man. Audiences loved these characters and enjoyed watching them interact with each other. The Italian composer Ruggero Leoncavallo came up with a story for an opera about one such group of traveling actors, a commedia troupe. It was based on a true story told to him by his father. A troupe of actors, a commedia group traveling through southern Italy, stops off for an evening to give a performance to an audience of farmers in a small village. In real life, the man who plays the role of Pagliaccio and the woman who plays the role of Colombina are married, but she's fallen in love with one of the villagers named Tonio. Tonio wants her to run away with him this very evening, and after some persuasion, she finally says, yes, after tonight's performance, I'll run away with you. One of the other actors, Taddeo, overhears their conversation and tells Pagliaccio, who is, of course, in despair over this news, and is a very, very jealous man. While getting dressed and made up for his performance as a clown, he sings an incredibly sad aria about having to go on stage in a comedy, acting as if there's absolutely nothing wrong. During the actual play, his anger boils over, and to the horror of the village, he draws a dagger from his sleeve and kills his wife, as well as her lover, Tonio, who jumps onto the stage to try to help her. Wow. 
Well, I told you, it's pretty intense. It's almost like a horror story, right? And mad clowns? Well, they just scare me. I don't know about you. But after the opera was written in 1892, it became one of the best known and most loved Italian operas ever written. It's also unusual for an opera because it's very short, no more than an hour and about 15 minutes long. But it's probably because of its compact length that it has had such popularity and made such an impact. It's a powerful story with powerful music that's an unforgettable experience in the theater. That's the music that the orchestra plays at the very beginning of the opera Pagliacci by Leon Cavallo. It's powerful, isn't it? It immediately captures our attention, makes us sit up and wonder, well, what's coming next? What this is at the beginning of the opera is music to help set the scene, to give the audience a hint of what the atmosphere of the story is going to be like. And the orchestra in the orchestra pit in front of the stage gives us clues to all this information by actually introducing some of the most important melodies that we'll hear later on as the story develops. Not long after this opening music by the full orchestra, we hear this melody from the horn section. That melody occurs later on in the opera when Canio is applying his makeup and putting on his costume, getting ready to go on stage and perform in a comedy when everything about his life has been crumbling down around his ankles. In his aria, he sings about how devastated he is that his wife, Nedda, is seeing another man. And he sings about the irony of the situation, how he must laugh on the outside and make other people laugh whereas inside, he, Canio, is completely falling apart. Here's the music that he sings to express all this. That big tune at the center of this aria? That's the tune that everyone recognizes from this opera, and in fact it's been used in all sorts of commercials, cartoons, and movies over the years to portray despair or desperation in love. In fact, the TV show The Simpsons did an entire episode that was a spoof on this opera, Pagliacci, and if I remember correctly, the character Sideshow Bob sings that very melody. The point of all this is that the composer, Leon Cavallo, gives us a musical clue that this melody is going to be heard again. And that's going to be very important to the story when he places it in the prologue or the overture to the opera at the very beginning. And that's not the only melody that the composer previews in the overture. We also get 
this melody. Now that melody has a completely different character from the desperation of Kanyo's melody, doesn't it? The first thing we notice is that its direction is up. In other words, the notes in the first part of the melody go up rather than down. Of course, everything that goes up must come down, right? Basic law of physics. Same thing in music, most of the time at least. If that first shape of the melody goes up, the next shape of the melody goes down. And that may seem a little silly at first to even take notice if a melody goes up or down, but even little things like that give a melody its emotional power. As opposed to the mostly downward motion of Kanio's melody, the thing that grabs us about this melody is its upward motion. It feels more hopeful, more optimistic. Well, you know what? This is the love theme that expresses the romance between Nedda, Kanio's wife, and Silvio, the villager. About midway through the opera, they have a wonderful duet, a vocal piece for two voices, in which they express their love for each other. That melody with its upward motion is heard quite prominently both from Neda and Silvio, as well as in the orchestra. Listen to how Silvio sings this melody. And a little later, Nedda sings it back to him, but with even more passion. And at the very end of the duet, the orchestra has its say as a solo cello, one of the lower stringed instruments in the orchestra, plays the melody again, this time tenderly and gently. And Leon Cavallo, our composer, gives us hints of these melodies at the very beginning of the opera when the orchestra is playing alone, setting the scene up in this prologue before the curtain even goes up. This was not an unusual thing for composers to do, to introduce in the overture the important melodies that the audience will hear later on. In fact, the American Broadway theater tradition borrowed that technique from opera, playing overtures before the curtain uh, that were based on the most recognizable tunes from the show. Even movies do this. Very often, a composer of a film score will use melodies in the opening credits or the first few moments of the movie to give a hint of music that will accompany some of the characters or images that we'll see later on. And all of that was because of the influence of opera. So we've got some music from Pagliacci that we, was used in a, a Simpsons episode, and we've got musical techniques used by opera composers that composers of film scores are still using today. I'll bet you didn't know that opera was so relevant and actually surrounds us in our musical environment practically every day. Amazing. 
The one-act opera Pagliacci that you're coming to see is an overpowering experience, but I know you're going to enjoy it and get the most out of it. Thanks for listening. I'll see you at the opera.